Dua Lipa wore a beautiful Chanel dress to the Met Gala this year and when I saw it I was immediately like wow I really want to make that. So get ready because in this video I'm going to show you how I made a corset similar to that one. I'm going to go over the inspiration, the materials, the pattern drafting, and the cutting and sewing of the garment. And not only that but I also have a free PDF pattern in the description box below in case you want to try it for yourself. Let's go! So why do I want to make this corset? Well, because I have a white tweed skirt that was given to me and it's a beautiful skirt, beautiful fabric, but it's not really my style. It really makes me look like an office secretary or something, so I really would like to thrift flip it into something that I would actually wear. However, there's not much fabric to work with, so it made it really hard finding something that I can actually turn it into. Till I saw Dua Lipa at the Met Gala with a white tweed corset dress. Apparently it was from the Chanel collection of 1992 and it's supposed to be like a bridal dress but the goal isn't for me to make it exactly like the original just to make it similar just the corset part of it and to crop it so that way I can wear it casually for any kind of occasion. And I'm also trying to hurry up and make this while the whole Met Gala topic is still relevant. So no time to waste, let's get started with the materials. So the first thing I have of course is the actual tweed fabric, but you can also use any other type of medium weight non-stretch woven fabric such as like leather or denim. Also there's a lining fabric, something lightweight and thin to go on the inside. Then you have the boning. I'm using a five millimeter boning that I bought off of eBay, it was super cheap. And then you're gonna need some interfacing to help make the corset more sturdy, of course. Then you're gonna need something for the black and white trim around the corset. And then to lace up in the back, of course, the go-to that everyone usually uses is like maybe a ribbon. I realized it was a bit too sturdy and stiff, so I ended up using a just making my own string to tie it up with with a old blouse and of course since you're going to be lacing something up you're going to need to use eyelets um, I'm going to be hand sewing my eyelets but you can use grommets if you want to and then of course you need to definitely have fabric to make a mock-up version for this corset because I feel like anything in regards to corsets or anything form-fitting to the body will definitely have some alterations that will be needed so definitely have a mock-up fabric or two to make this garment. And then last but not least is the pattern which is what I'm going to be doing in the next step. I drafted it on my dress form and it was actually a pretty fun Thing to do. I was doing that while watching TV. I uh, used masking tape and a marker and basically just put the tape on the dress form and then drew the design that I was trying to make. It's much cheaper and easier than using muslin fabric for any type of form-fitting corset idea that you have for a dress form. As soon as I was finished doing that, I immediately peeled it off and cut them into the pattern pieces and it made six pieces for the corset. I was like, wow, that was actually not that bad. So let me go ahead and make a mock-up. This is going to be easy. And I made a mock-up and it was a hot mess. <laughs> there were so many issues with the mock-up. The neckline was just looking really funky and the back was way too big or too loose. And there was an issue with the waist pointy thing. After doing it a second time though, it looked much better after fixing all those issues and I was ready to make the real thing. So the first step was of course seam ripping and opening up the skirt. I have never worked with tweed before and I just love the way it felt. It just feels so fancy like something you would you know wear on Gossip Girl or something. <laughs> After opening up the entire skirt I was able to see exactly how much fabric I had to work with just so I know that I have enough for the measurements of my body and the seam allowance as well. So the skirt was about 60 centimeters in length and about 95 centimeters in width. And of course, along with my measurements, they gave me just enough to make everything for the, for the corset. So I first decided to just cut everything out in the lining first, putting the pattern on the skirt just to see what it would look like on it and see where I would be able to cut it. After cutting out that part and then sewing together the lining, looked pretty okay and I was thinking hmm, okay I think this is a I think I'm ready to do the outer fabric now so then I had to get ready to cut it on out of the tweed fabric this is where I was starting to worry 
oh my god what if i cut it wrong what if it doesn't fit right what if there's not enough fabric what if this turns out ugly i might just end up wasting this fabric and won't be able to wear it because of the mistakes like all of those thoughts was in my head because i just didn't really want to mess up i can be a bit of perfectionist but having to just put those thoughts out of my head and then just get started so i had to carefully cut and to see that there's just just enough fabric to make it I cut out all of the pieces it looked really really great after cutting out the pieces i went ahead and did the same thing for the interfacing and ironed on the interfacing to the outer fabric the next step was cutting out the boning channels i used some uh pretty cheap fabric that I got from the Dollar Tree actually. I could just cut out the strips of that fabric about three centimeters and then fold it three ways. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, eight channels for the, for the corset. And I had to iron that on, make sure it's flat and to sew on all of those channels. After inserting the channels, you sew the outer and the lining fabric together on the top parts around the neckline and the armholes. And to cut little slices around the curve so that way when you flip it out it lays a bit flatter and you're still going to have to iron it though iron the parts of it like i did and then to do a top stitch after ironing after that everything laid a whole lot more flat and it felt looked much more professional looking once i finished with that i had to add the actual boning cutting out the boning pieces uh, you want to make sure that it is at least one to two centimeters shorter than the actual length of the garment so that way you don't have to worry about sewing on the boning and then breaking a needle so make sure that the boning is a little bit shorter to also iron out the boning because it comes very stiff and you don't want it to be too stiff so to iron it out a little bit with some fabric on top before entering the boning into the corset also the edges can be a bit sharp as well you're supposed to really just like sand down the edges whoops i forgot to do that step so make sure you don't forget to do that step <laughs> after putting in the boning you have an option to use a bias tape around the bottom of the corset but i didn't want to do that i didn't want to use a bias tape so i decided to fold in the lining and fold in the outer part and pin it all the way around the bottom of the corset which was a lot of pins <laughs> and then to slowly sew around sew over the pins that i did which is can be very difficult because going too fast you can break a pin or break a needle and it might fly at you in the eye so was, i had to go very slowly and carefully to not mess anything up through it just make sure to go slow and then take your time after that part it was time for the eyelets so i decided i wanted to do hand sewn eyelets because it looked more old-fashioned i guess and after cutting out using like some shears and some scissors to cut out nine eyelets on each side why did i choose nine i don't know but i cut them out and i uh, decided to hand sew with some thread regular sewing thread and the eyelets doing that though made it look really really ugly <laughs> so i was thinking oh my god i think i need to go get some grommets so i went to the store and got some grommets and this the pack that I got only comes with 15 and I have 18 eyelets so I don't have enough grommets to fit the eyelets that I made. And not only that but the metal, I realized I don't like the way that the metal eyelets look on the corset. I didn't, I wasn't digging the metal so I decided to try again with hand sewing the eyelets but this time using the white yarn. So I used some of the white yarn, unraveled it a bit and used that to sew the um the eyelets and it looked much better not perfect but still much better so the next step was doing the embroidering of the trimming around the corset i decided to use yarn because the picture in the picture it looks like yarn and i have yarn so that's what i'm going to use but in order to sew with it because it's naturally thick i you have to unravel it and when i unraveled it it got so tangly and messy it was just a mess. I was doing it the wrong way. If you ever unravel yarn, do not pull it. Unravel the black yarn so that it was thin enough to go through my embroidery needle. I was able to do a trimming around the corset with the black yarn. 
and then do it again with the white yarn. And the last step was the lacing in the back. Of course, you can easily just go out and buy some ribbons or something to lace it up, but I decided to make it from a shirt that I had, um, an old blouse with a black ruffle, and I just undid the ruffle, cut it up into two strips, fold it three ways, and then fold it again so that's very, very thin, about half a, half a centimeter or five millimeters, and then sew that skinny strip so that way it was skinny enough to go through the eyelids and it fit perfectly. Okay, so here's the reveal. I absolutely love this corset. It is inspired by Chanel, but it is made by moi. It feels great. It's comfortable. I made it so that there's just a little bit of some gap. You know, that way I have some breathing room and it's not too, too tight um, on my waist. But I love the way it looks. I feel like I can wear it to almost like any occasion and yeah, I'm really, really happy and proud of myself. I know it's not perfect. It doesn't look exactly like the original, but it's the best that I could do. And I'm proud of myself for that. So <laughs> I also have the, of course, the free pattern. PDF pattern is down below in the description box. Feel free to use that and try it for yourself if you like. And let me know what you think. That way, if it turned out okay, then I can make some more free patterns for you guys in the future. So. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.